Well, hello, everybody. Uh, grace, peace, and blessings from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, thank you for um, definitely tuning in. Uh, myself, um, Brother O'Dane, and my wife, uh, Sister Keisha, from the Stories of Truth Ministries. All right. And here we're, we're, we bring the truth. All right. So the Lord has called us to do bring the truth, to preach the truth, not to compromise in any way, fashion, or form. All right. So today, um, the Lord has um, been speaking to us about this particular subject matter, especially um, these times around this month and going into the new year, basically about, about prayer. And today's teaching is going to be basically about the importance of prayer and worship. All right. Prayer and worship. All right. Beneficial. As I always say to people, a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. All right. And throughout the entire scripture, the Bible itself, Old Testament. New Testament, there's always examples of people praying, trusting in God, and even worshiping, in which examples we are also going to give, all right? Jesus Christ being the ultimate example, he prayed. There's times he got up in the morning or before the sun hit and he prayed. Mm -hmm. There's times where it said he prayed all night mm -hmm. and he saw his disciples to pray, all right? Why is it many Christians today are not praying? Why is it many neglect prayer? All right, that's the question. Do they understand the importance of prayer? Do they understand the benefits of spending time in prayer? All right, it helps you stay connected to the vine. Mm -hmm. If you're not building that prayer life, that, that relationship with Jesus Christ, even through prayer, you're gonna get caught up in this world. Yes, it's the truth. And it's fine to have people pray for you. However, like my husband said, it's important to have your own prayer life because that's your communication um, to God. And also you praying according to his will. So it may be things that God wants you to pray for, but you have to be in God's will. And how you get in God's will is knowing God, spending time in his word and spending intimate time with God, having a personal relationship with God. You know, there's no way around it. You can always ask people to pray for you. However, you have to know how to pray for yourself. Yes, yes, amen. You have to learn how to pray for yourself because this, in all truth, it's a personal relationship, you know, a personal walk. All right. So, yes, people can pray for you, but you have to learn to also pray for yourself. Okay. First things first, you know, Jesus, you know, they basically commanded us, he stated about worshiping the Father, the Spirit, and the truth. I'm going to share my screen right now. I'm all reading right. from John 4, verses 23 to 24. I'm hoping you can all see the screen. All right. And it says right here, but a time is coming and even now has arrived when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and truth. For such people, the father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. All right. Now, there's a key word in there. All right. Jesus used the term true worshipers. True worshipers. So when there's a true, there's a false. Let's keep that in mind. Let's keep that concept in mind. When there is a true, there is a false. All right. We'll touch on that false worship later on in this teaching. But I want to right now focus on true worshipers. All right. First thing is first, however, what does it mean to worship the Father in spirit and in truth? All right. Well, first off, to worship the Father in spirit and in truth, all right, it, there has to be sincerity involved. All right. There has to be sincerity involved from the heart, mm -hmm. all right? Because God looks at the heart, all right? It means you must glorify God in public, family, private, all life in accordance with God's own nature mm -hmm. and truth, mm -hmm. all right? As I mentioned, true worship must originate from the heart. It must be sincere, motivated by our love for God yes. and gratitude for all he is and has done. All and right? God is a spirit, and we must connect to him through the spirit. spirit. That's yes. an excellent point. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's an excellent point. Mm -hmm. Through the spirit, not the flesh. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> God doesn't want to do what God is. He wants your flesh crucified mm -hmm. through the spirit. That's why Jesus said in spirit and in, in truth. truth. Yes. 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 Amen. You know, he wants to connect to us with our spirit. That's why as we spend time in prayer and worship, our spirit grows. Mm -hmm. It builds stronger, especially if you're praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. Yes. And talks about, you know, praying in tongues mm -hmm. edifies a man, man, you know. 
You never receive that gift, ask God for that gift, praying in tongues, mm -hmm. because that builds, that charges up your spirit. Mm -hmm. And the more your spirit grows, the more you become sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading, the more you become sensitive to God's voice, becomes clear and stuff like that. Amen. Like, all right. So that's the reason why we must worship in truth. It's going to help build your relationship with Jesus Christ. All right. It's going to cause you to love God more and more mm -hmm. because as you die to yourself, as your flesh is being crucified mm -hmm. and the spirit is growing, a part of the spirit is love, all right? As we as we know, flesh and spirit are opposites, mm -hmm. all right? If you love this world more and more, that's your flesh. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's your flesh, yes. all right? Bible tells us any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Not in that's him. in uh, 1 John, I mean, mm -hmm. chapter 3 or 4. And remember. also you're an enemy of God. And you're an enemy of God, that's right. However, if the spirit is growing, you're going to actually love God more and more. And you're going to dislike the ways of this world. You see, that's what prayer and worship does. That's the benefit of it. When we spend that time in prayer, you, mm -hmm. you take that time out of your day. All right, let's say like, like an hour. I'm going to use this time to pray to my mm -hmm. father right now. He honors that. Mm -hmm. All right. Getting up in the middle of the night. There's time God wakes us up in the middle of the night. All right. Whether it's 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Because, you know, they say that's witching hour, I believe. Mm -hmm. All right. A lot of high demonic activity. God has watchmen. All right. There's time he wakes people up in those times to pray, pray. to worship. All right. Worship. Yes. There's time he does that. All right. This is what that's what God desires. That's what he wants. All right. Jesus said it's time is coming. We must worship the father in spirit and in truth. And truth also means sincerity of heart. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at something else. John now. chapter 9, verse 31. Mm -hmm. All right, it reads, We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if someone is God-fearing and does his will, he listens to him. All right, it says God-fearing. In the King James translation, it says that someone is a worshiper of God and does his will, him he listens to. All right, true worship. All right. If you're not worshiping God in spirit and truth, listen. Father ain't going to hear you. Yeah. If you live in sin, he ain't going to hear you. Mm -hmm. All right. God doesn't listen to sinners. All right. There's another verse that speaks of this in Peter. All right. It says the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are attentive towards his prayers. But the face of the Lord is against all those who do wickedness. All right. If someone is God friend, a true worshiper of God and does his will, God will hear you. Amen. 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 He will hear you. Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. All right. If you have not realized this, you can well, realize today, as my wife mentioned about connecting to God in the mm -hmm. spirit, what he desires. A part of worshiping God is your life, mm -hmm. your lifestyle, how you're living. All right. A lot of, all right, let's say professing Christians. All right. They may not do certain things. I don't know. Take drugs, fornication, curse, whatever. Drink right. Alcohol. Drink alcohol, whatever. All right. But at the same time, they love this world. Mm -hmm. At the same time, they're gossiping. Same time, they're filled with pride, sins that are not noticeable, mm -hmm. right? So the point is, is this, are you crucifying the flesh? That's how you offer your body as a living sacrifice. You see, offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. no longer living for ourselves. Offer yes. that up on the altar. Yes. When you're offering something up on the altar, it means you're going to kill it. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. That's right. It means you're going to kill it. You're putting it to death. That's a sacrifice. What is it saying to us? Kill this flesh. Mm -hmm. Kill this flesh. Mm -hmm. No, we ain't talking about suicide. Right. Be, be realistic, <laughs> folks. All right. Kill this flesh. Deny to yourself. Mm -hmm. Deny yourself. When you do that, that is true worship. As you mentioned, as the flesh dies, the spirit grows. And because it's growing, your love for God grows more. And you're going to desire and want to spend time in prayer. You're going to delight in that stuff. Amen. Amen. A sister in Christ did pray that today during our prayer session. Mm hmm that's an awesome prayer to yes. die to self, crucify yes. the flesh. That yes. was just so awesome. Yes. Yes. That's mm -hmm. that's what it is. The Bible telling us, offer our bodies Body as a living sacrifice, sacrifice yes. which is our spiritual worship. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at verse two, it says that be no longer conformed to this world. Wow. All right. 
when you're doing that, you begin to grow in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Your mind begins to be renewed, begins to change. All right. When you're spending time in the presence of God, that's how it's going to happen. If you're not, then your flesh is going to grow stronger. Mm -hmm. You're not, you're not going to grow in the love of Christ. Yes. All right. You're going to become lukewarm. Eventually you're going to become complacent. Eventually you're just going to walk away from faith. Some, some big yeah. trial going to come. You're going to turn away. Turn away. God doesn't want that. He doesn't want that. That's why he called us to worship him in spirit and in truth. In truth. Sincerity that reflects his character, mm -hmm. his nature, nature, who he is, mm -hmm. based on your lifestyle. All right. God doesn't like sin, lawlessness. So he has called us out of that through Jesus Christ. So we're not supposed to live those mm -hmm. old ways anymore. Mm -hmm. But now we live according to the teaching of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. All right. This is what worship also does. I want to share this in case you may not know. All right. Worshiping also brings you into God's. All right. Let's presence. look at. Um, I'm going to look at. Psalms 104. Right. And it reads. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courtyards with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. All right. It, that's deep. OK. You know, we probably at church heard these songs being me son, mm. I'll enter his gates Sweet with thanksgiving in my heart. You know the song. All right. <laughs> been to church, you know the song. All right. But this is telling us something spiritual. I always recommend this to people, all right? And I heard also pastors say this, and I also experienced this myself personally. Before you begin prayer, you want to spend time in prayer. Before you begin to your prayer, enter worship. Yeah. Put on some worship it music. Sets the atmosphere. Yes, yeah. that's one of the benefits. It sets the atmosphere. Mm. All right. It sets the atmosphere. Um, when you enter into worship, the atmosphere changes. Your your mind is is more clear. clear. All right, it's more focused. Mm -hmm. You know, praise God. It, you 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 have better concentration. Mm -hmm. Anytime you begin to worship and praise, okay. you're basically setting the atmosphere in the realm of the spirit. You're actually going into the courts. Court. All right, even though you're physically here, you're still physically here. Your spirit is drawing closer to God. All right. This, these are spiritual realities. These are truths. When we read these Psalms and we look at these as metaphors, yes, according to the physical world, these are metaphors, mm -hmm. but in the spirit, it's actually happening. Mm -hmm. It's actually happening. All right. When it says enter to, to his gates with thanksgiving, when you begin to praise and engage in thanksgiving, supplication in the spirit, your soul is actually going into the presence of God. Yeah even though your body's still physically here. Mm -hmm. That is why when you begin to praise and worship, you begin to feel the, the presence of God come upon you. Mm -hmm. You begin to feel the presence of God intensify because your spirit is actually drawn closer to God mm -hmm. in the courts. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Man, I'll tell you this truth, man. When you begin to do this, this praise and worship, it's like things clear out the atmosphere. You may be having bad thoughts, yes. distractive mm -hmm. thoughts. But worry whatever exactly yeah. worry doubts whatever it may be but when you begin to do this your mind gets clear yeah. all right it, it doesn't happen immediately but when you like let's say you go for like 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes it begins to happen mm -hmm. and this is how you know i'm gonna give you a key right and some of you may already know this this is how you know when you actually begin to connect all right what do you mean by, by connect all day all right, a lot of people they pray but they don't really connect yet all right you know when you connect, mm -hmm. all right? When you feel that power, you feel the presence of God. You just feel it, mm -hmm. all right? You, you the, it's, a, it's around you. God's presence, the fire is, a, is around you. Whatever you want to say, it's electric, electricity, whatever it is. It's around you. You connect, mm -hmm. all right? Your concentration is focused, all right? When you begin to connect, your phone begins to ring. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> all right, now why does that happen? Mm -hmm. It's the devil. Distraction. You want to distract you, cut that connection off. Mm -hmm. Cut that connection off. That's why. He wants to cut that connection off. All right. That's why your phone begins to ring. Somebody calling you name. Hey, come down. This and that. Doorbell ringing. <laughs> baby crying. Listen, it's not coincidence. There's a reason behind that. Yeah. I, I go through it. Mm -hmm. But I learned to ignore stuff. Yes. Because I know the strategy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I know the strategy. I learned to ignore things. Right. And God take care of things. I'm telling you, I tell you this. You out. Listen, listen, folks. All right. All right, I got, I'll just testify, all right? You want to call me crazy? Go ahead. It don't matter. I got kids, all right? My my, my daughter was a baby. You're like, you know, one or whatever, right? Sometimes I was praying, worshiping. I, I know about connecting. And when I'm about to connect, baby start crying. Ah, this and that. But I know what it was. 
I know it was. I said, I'm not falling for that trick. Mm -hmm. I'm falling for that trick. Lord, you, Lord, you put him to sleep. I keep praying. Eventually, that baby went back to sleep. <laughs> went right back to sleep. God, tell his angel, put him back to sleep. Mm -hmm. Go back to sleep. All right, I'm, I think I'm crazy. No, I'm telling you this truth. He will answer your prayers. Mm -hmm. All right, when you when you step out in that faith, you do stuff like that, you're going to see the hand of God. Lord came, put the baby right back to sleep. Went right back to sleep. And guess what? Slept through the whole night. <laughs> So I know that was God, because the scripture says God put you in a deep sleep. Yeah. So I'm telling you, when you when you connect, that's what it does, man. Enter into his presence with thanksgiving. All right. You get to that place, your concentration becomes focused. All right. Your mind becomes mm -hmm. clear. You know, you have doubts, anger, worry. But when you actually keep praying, keep worshiping, put on the worship music, you'll get to that place where your mind becomes clear. Yeah. You're beginning to connect. Mm -hmm. You're focused. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to, um, I'm going to show you some scriptures about this. All right. The old Testament gives us some, um, symbols. All right. So we got to look at the symbols in the old Testament. All right. What I mean by, by symbols, but I'm going to show you, we got to look at the, I'm going to explain it to you. All right. We're going to look at, um, second Chronicles chapter five. All right. Well, we're not going to read all of this, but I'm just going to explain what this is about. This is about, um, after Solomon, built the temple. Solomon, you know, he he went out to go build the temple. He was given instructions to build the temple, the temple of God. Right? And, um, you know, he designed it certain ways. So now in this chapter, the Ark of the Covenant is now being brought back into the temple. All right? Basically, now they're going to dedicate the temple. Now they're going to pray. All right? And this is what I want us to focus on. I want us to look at this and what's actually going on. So we are actually going to start at let's start at um, verses 10. I'm going to read from 10 all the way to 14, all right? And it reads, There was nothing in the ark except the two tablets which Moses put there at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the sons of Israel when they came out of Egypt. All right. Now, everybody pay attention to this now. Verse 11. When the priests came out from the holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without regard to divisions. And all the Levitical singers, Asaph, Heman, Ju Ju Judith mm -hmm. and their sons of kinsmen clothed in fine linen with cymbals, harps, and lyre, standing east of the altar and with them 120 priests blowing trumpets. All right. A unison when the trumpets and the singers were to make themselves heard with one voice to praise and to glorify the Lord. And when they raised their voices accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other musical instruments, and when they praised the Lord, saying, he indeed is good for his kindness is everlasting. Then the house, the house of the Lord was filled with the cloud. Right. So that the priest could not rise to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. All right. I want us to pay attention to two things. Let me, let's start at the cloud. All right. It says the cloud, which we know in the Old Testament represented the presence of God. All right. Once they began to praise, worship, the cloud filled that temple. All right. We got let's look at the symbols of things. Remember what I said, let's look at the symbols of things now. Let's picture this. They began to praise. They began to worship. The cloud filled that temple. All right. Now, in the New Testament, what is the temple of God? It's the body. Yes. The body. Remember what I just spoke about saying that as you begin to praise and worship, the time comes where you get to feel God's presence intensify. Mm -hmm. That's what it's symbolizing. All right. You begin to feel his presence intensify, his power, the anointing, whether you want the fire, whether it's electricity, people describe it. You begin to feel it as you begin to praise and worship. The whole atmosphere changes because the presence, the cloud has come. That's what it symbolizes. That's what happens, people. That's what happens. Now, listen, I want us to all pay attention to this too, right? Verse 11, when the priest came out of the holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without regards to this division. Sanctified, set apart. Remember, we just spoke about living in sin. God doesn't hear sinners. Listen, it's going to be very, very difficult to enter God's presence if you're living in sin. Because mm -hmm. of the condemnation. Yes, because of condemnation. Not only that, because of conviction. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the flesh. The flesh. The flesh. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very hard, you know? That's why God wants to turn away from that first, you know? Mm -hmm. When you're convicted, ask God for forgiveness. Ask God for forgiveness. He forgives you, all right? Make an effort not to do it again. To strive, all right? When you're living um, in a way that's pleasing to God, living in holiness, righteousness, 
it's going to be easier to enter into his presence. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm speaking from experience. Yeah. That's true. I'm speaking from experience. All right. Sanctified. Sanctified. That's what God wants it to be sanctified. But I wanted to show you this about the cloud. All right. The cloud began to fill that place when he began to praise God, worship God. Set the atmosphere, people, mm -hmm. before you pray. Set the atmosphere. Start to worship. Start to pray. All right. And you'll feel the presence of God. And you go from there. All right. Next thing I wanted to show you, I wanted to speak on now. All right. The benefit of um, praying and worshiping. All right. This also brings you victory during warfare. Yes. Victory during warfare. Victory. All right. There's a lot of times we may be going through certain battles, all right? Maybe going through certain things, certain challenges, mm -hmm. right? And we may not know how to fight mm -hmm. properly, all right? All right, yeah, we pray. There's times we pray. But do you know that when it comes to warfare, that there are other aspects mm -hmm. that are involved, not only prayer, but also worshiping? Worship. You have to engage in warfare. Mm -hmm. There's times where when they were going to war, I don't have the scripture, but in the Old Testament, when they went out to war, they used to put people in the front and sound trumpets. Mm -hmm. That's symbolic wow. of something. All right. That's symbolic. We're going to uh, we're going to look at a story real quick. Because I want us to all see this about worship. Worship also can bring you victory. All right. Can bring you victory. When you're praising and worshiping God, you're going through stuff, all right? Mm -hmm. Start to worship the Lord. Start to thank him. Thank him in advance for the victory. Jeremiah 20, verse 13, what it says. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has saved the soul of the needy one from the hand of evildoers. Amen. Yes, that's so awesome. Yes, yeah, sometimes when we go through things. And we're like overtaken and we feel like defeated or whatever it is. Like just worship. It will even change how you perceive that situation. Just by just worshiping, you'll feel better. It's just like, it like kind of delivers you in, in a sense. I can't explain it, but it's just like so awesome. If you just get in the mind of worship, you'll forget about that problem. For It could be temporary. It could be, you know, just your, it delivers you out of it. You know, like you just forget all about it because of the worship. Yes. Yes, that's that's what it does. You know, you you your your mind changes like changes, you lose yeah, all fear, yeah, all right. doubt. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Worship. I didn't know how to put in the words. Yeah, yeah worship. That's what it's God wants. Like things come off you. Yes. Yeah. You know something? This is this this is gonna tie into um this scripture right here, right? Let's go go to um I'll read um Second Chronicles twenty, right? I'm not gonna read all of it. I'm gonna read some, and um my wife is gonna read some. I'll read this first part right now, so we can see what's going on. Now it came about after this that the sons of Moab and the sons of Ammon, together with some of the Munites, all right, however you pronounce it, Munites, came to make war against Jehoshaphat. All right. Then some came and reported to Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Aram, and behold, they are in Hazazon Tamar. Jehoshaphat was afraid. And turned his attention to seek the Lord. All right, that's key. Mm -hmm. And he proclaimed the period of fasting throughout Judah. All right. So Judah gathered together to seek help from the Lord. They even came from all the cities of Judah to seek the Lord. Now they're going into physical warfare. Remember, we got to look at this symbolically because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Right. He was afraid because a, a multitude is coming at coming at coming at him. All right. How many times were you know we go through situations, I don't know, about probably losing your job or something or or I don't know, lose your house, whatever it may be, whatever trial situation may be, you may become worried, afraid of it, all right? But do you go seek the Lord? Mm. Jehoshaphat went to go seek the Lord. Or do you go seek people mm -hmm. <laughs> to deliver you? Do you call somebody up, hey, bail me out of this? Mm -hmm. Who do you put your trust in? It's true. We have to really examine ourselves, all right? Jehoshaphat saw a great army coming, all right? He didn't even call reinforcement. He went to go seek the Lord. Not only that, proclaim the fast, mm -hmm. all right? We always talk about prayer and fasting, mm -hmm. all right? So he went to go seek the Lord. And now we're going to look at something about his prayer, all right? I'm going to read this part. 
right? Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, here he goes, Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in the heavens? And are you not ruler over all the kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are in your hands so that no one can stand against you. Did you not, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land from your people Israel and give it to the descendants of your friend Abraham forever? So he's declaring the works mm -hmm. of God in his prayer, declaring his works. Mm -hmm. All right. They have lived in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, the sword or judgment or plague or famine, we will stand before this house and before you, for your name is in this house, and cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear and save us. Now behold the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you did not allow Israel to invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, where they turned aside from them and did not destroy them. See how they are rewarding us by coming to drive us out from your possession which you have given us as inheritance. He declaring God's promises. God promised to give them that, right? I want to see see his, fo I want you guys to see the focus point of his prayers. He's now declaring God's promise and something, a situation that's happening is contrary to what God has promised them. So he's declaring this. Our God, will you not judge them? For we are powerless before this great multitude that is coming against us. He says this in humility, all right? He says, yo, we're powerless to go against us. Humility, God, God, God honors humility. All right. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes on you. God wants us to reach a place where we are fully dependent on him. All right. I know that there's times, you know, we're taught. Be strong, this and that, you know, do this on your own. All right, cool. Yes, we all learned that from our parents. But guess what? That's the flesh. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the spirit, you just got to be fully dependent on God. Mm -hmm. And when you're not, God will put you in situations where you have to depend on him so you can see his hand, all right? All right, so we're going to skip down. I want I want us to see now and hear the answer. Um, my wife can read this from uh, verse 14 all the way to 17, all right? Then in the midst of the assembly, the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, all right. the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Joel, the son of Mattaniah, the Levite, the sons of Asaph. Here's the answer. And he said, listen, all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Right. Tomorrow, go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the accent of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the valley in front of the wilderness of Jurel. You need not fight in this battle. Take your position, stand and watch the salvation of the Lord in your behalf. Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out to face them for the Lord is with you. All right. So the answer has come. All right. After the prayer, mm -hmm. the spirit of the Lord came upon someone and he began to prophesy, speak. All right. And declare the words of the Lord that God has given the victory. Now, I want us to all pay attention now. All right. So I'm going to read this part now. All right. Verse 20. They rose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. And when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Put your trust in the Lord, your God, and you will endure. Put your trust in his prophets and succeed. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who sang to the Lord and those who praise him in holy attire. As they went out before the army and said, give thanks to the Lord for his faithfulness is everlasting. Listen, folks, mm -hmm. when they began singing and praising, the Lord set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, so they were struck down. For the sons of Ammon, Moab, rose up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, completely destroying them. And when they had finished with the inhabitants of Seir, they helped destroy one another. Mm. All right. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Mm. You read it for yourselves. God allowed their enemies to destroy themselves mm. and began praising and worshiping. That's something. Yeah, that's awesome. That's something. And when it says the battle is not yours, but the Lord's, meaning that, you know, whatever enemies we have, God will take care of them. He covers his children. He protects us. 
because your enemies is also God's enemies. You That's know, right. people can't just raise their heels up against you and do what they want to do. God is going to set vengeance for you. That's right. That's right. He covers us. He protects us. Yes. You know, we don't have to worry. No worry. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. That's right. He says in the word, yes. don't fear. Don't fear. Don't fear. You're going through spiritual mm -hmm. warfare battle. These are enticed, um, instigated by demonic spirits. Yes. There's yes. Right, demonic forces, mm -hmm. even working through people. Begin to praise and worship. Mm -hmm. You want that victor, victor, begin to praise and worship him. Mm -hmm. Pray, praise and worship. Praise and worship to set the atmosphere. That's then begin to pray. Yeah. That's a strength because our yeah. flesh want to retaliate. Exactly. Get back at people and all this other stuff. Press through, worship. Press through. I'm speaking to myself too. Yes, yes, same here. <laughs> press, press through and worship. The presence yeah. of God just come upon you. Yeah. Then you have that that confidence, that faith, because all fear and doubt begins to diminish. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. That's what it's about. Amen. All right. Now we want to show you something. All right. Remember, it's important to worship God in spirit and truth, but there's also something called false worship. Mm -hmm. All right. Now. We spoke on certain things about certain pagan holidays, right? We did Halloween and stuff, and um, we didn't really dive into a Christmas teaching. But we're going to speak a little bit about that mm -hmm. right here. You know, if the Lord wills, we'll maybe go further in sometime, sometime in the future. But I know around this time of year, you know, people gather around, do their, their holiday Christmas shopping, this and that. All right, get give some presents. All right, the world does that. But this is what I'm going to touch on, all right? This is what this is this is this is my problem here. Many Christians, all right, we love to speak and say, you know, this is the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We mm -hmm. celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Where in the Bible does it say that? <laughs> I'm just being realistic. Yeah. I just want somebody to show me in the scripture where it says Jesus Christ is born on December 25th. And can I add on to that? Okay, so people try to justify that by answering, well, we celebrate Jesus every day. Okay, so if you're already living for Christ every day, you're not obligated to celebrate December 25th because it's a pagan day. Jesus Christ was not born on December 25th. People try to justify it. It's nowhere in the Bible, nowhere. And not, not only that, we're not obligated. Nowhere in the Bible it says to celebrate his birth. I want everybody to, <laughs> to, to look at this, all right? Yeah. Just everybody look at this, all right? We have to pay attention to Jesus' words, mm -hmm. all right? I'm going to read from Mark 7, 5 through 8, all right? And it reads, So the Pharisees and scribes asked Jesus, Why do your disciples not live their lives according to the tradition of the elders? I'm coming from the Amplified Version, all right? But instead eat their bread with ceremonial unwashed hands. He replied, Rightly did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, all right? Mm -hmm. Play actors, pretenders, as it is written in scriptures. These people honor me with your lips, but their heart is far from me. They worship me in vain. Their worship is meaningless and worthless, a pretense. Teaching the precepts of men as doctrines, giving their traditions equal weight with scriptures. Traditions. Yes. That's false worship. Mm -hmm. All right. Nowhere in the scripture, anywhere, Jesus didn't come in, nor the apostles. Mm -hmm. Are we supposed to partake in these pagan holidays? Mm -hmm. The world partakes of this stuff. This is the world stuff. How does it get involved in Christianity? No this, this thing goes way back. This yes. thing was introduced. Mm -hmm. All right. This this thing is about. All right. Listen. There's this, this false god known as Mithra. As yeah. I said, we're not getting mm -hmm. we're not getting deep into that. Yeah. There's this false god known as Mithra. Um, they, he was worshipped by the Persians, and I believe um in India, his name was like M Mitra in India. Then his name got changed to, to Mithra in Persia. All right. His birthday was on December 25th. December 25th. And he was considered like the son of God. Mm -hmm. All right. We can even go research it. Go on you know, YouTube. People got teachings on, on that stuff. That's where it comes from. Yes. And the Roman Catholics crept it into the church. Yes. They crept into the church. Mm -hmm. Mithra in Persia is equivalent to, I believe, um, Tammuz Tamu, mm -hmm. in um, Babylon. Babylon. Yeah. Babylonian worship. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Different culture. Um, same deity. Different name. name. All right. His birthday was December 25th, 25th. Tammuz. Mm -hmm. All right. It even speaks about that in, in, in the book of Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. Not really going to get into that right now. But what I'm trying to tell you is this is where it comes from. Yes. It's pagan. That's right? the foundation That's of the it. foundation. History pagan. of it. Yeah. Yes. And people are people were called some Christian putting on Christmas trees. Read it's Jeremiah right 10. Read Jeremiah 10, chapter 10. Now it talks about don't go into the way of the nations. 
All right, they, they take a tree out of the forest and they deck it with gold and silver and precious jewels. Read Jeremiah chapter 10. Christmas and, is about self. Yeah, and you tell me what that's, what's that speaking mm -hmm. of. It's about self. Christmas is about, Christmas is about self. Because I have a question. Yeah. If it was really about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus have certain things that we as Christians are supposed to do, which is give to the poor, visit the imprisoned, like people that don't have what we have. Why is Christmas based around us getting more material things every year? Right. How is that honoring Christ? It's, Christ it's about self. It's about materialism. That's right. That's right. But how does the Lord call us to live? Mm -hmm. All right. Set apart. All right. So let's look at look at seven, Second Kings chapter 17, verse 38 through 39. All right. It says, the covenant that I have made with you, you shall not forget. You shall not fear other gods, but the Lord your God, you shall fear and worship. Then he will rescue you from the hands of all your enemies. Listen, folks, this is deep. All right. We may not think of it like this, but maybe perhaps a lot of times when you know, so-called Christians are going through a lot of things, mm -hmm. being afflicted by spiritual enemies. Mm -hmm. Perhaps those are open, open doorways. doorways. Yeah. Because you're engaging in false worship. worship. You ever thought about mm -hmm. that? You ever thought about that? Think of the children of Israel. When they engage in false worship, worship other gods, what happened to them? They were mm -hmm. afflicted. Put those stuff away. Man. Put it away. It has nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with a false God. And I actually saw the spirit that's behind Christmas. Mm -hmm. I think I shared this in a testimony that... um. I went into like a, you know, paralyzed, what is it? Uh, sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis. What happened was last year I was sharing a poem with people that I wrote about um, um, Christmas. That is folly, is pagan. So I've been like kind of like tussling with this. I don't celebrate Christmas, haven't for years. So I'm, I'm like praying to God or whatever. And actually I had um, a paralyzed, um, you know, sleep paralysis and um, the spirit actually came in my room. It was like a big Christmas tree. It may sound funny. I, I actually laughed at it afterwards, but big Christmas tree, but I saw the legs under the tree. Like somebody was like actually standing behind the tree. So then I'm like seeing this in the spirit. Then when the Christmas tree removed, I saw what you call it that holds the sky, oh, a the demon, Grim or the Grim Reaper, or like a demon. I say it's a demon. That actually is a demonic force behind Christmas and a lot of witchcraft activity. Like my husband said, we won't get deep into it. But the winter solstice, yes. a lot of evil activity that goes on. I've seen it for myself last year. And um, as soon as I came out of that, um, my husband um, at that time, he texted me, you know, um, you know, let's pray or whatever. That was last December. Yes. 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 There, there's a, a demonic spirit behind mm -hmm. this. It may look friendly. But well, listen, the enemy comes as the angel of light. light. Yes. All right. This mm -hmm. th that's false worship. Worship. That's not worshiping God in spirit and truth. True. No. That's in falsehood. Mm -hmm. Honoring God on a pagan holiday. Listen, if you want to honor God, you keep His commandments. Mm -hmm. That's what He's looking for. Keep His commandments. Mm -hmm. But if he, He's commanded, don't put no other gods before Him. Before Him. You know, don't go in the way of the heathens, the nations. Get away from that stuff. The world partakes of that. The Bible says, mm -hmm. "Friendship with the world well, is enmity towards okay. God." And for those of you who are saying there's nowhere written in the Bible where we can't celebrate it, and how is it sin? Well, idolatry is a is a very broad topic. I'm mm -hmm. just gonna keep it at that. Yeah. It's a form of idolatry. Yeah, yeah, you know it is. You're getting Christmas trees, mm -hmm. Christmas yeah, lights, like Santa Claus, like what? Yeah, it has nothing to do with nothing. Jesus Christ. Whatever, it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. As I said, if anybody can present me a Bible scripture that shows that he was mm -hmm. born on December 25th, all right, cool. We're all for it then. We can yeah. celebrate. We're going we to we <laughs> start celebrating and stuff. By giving to the poor. The we poor. don't need anything. Yeah. I was celebrating yeah. Christ. We getting gifts. Yeah. But <laughs> if you can't show me it in the scripture, mm -hmm. then please do not say we're doing this in, for the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, that this is the birth of Jesus Christ. No word tells you that. Matter of fact, see. God has not even commanded us to even celebrate mm -hmm. Christ's birth. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. It hasn't commanded us. One of the most important things of Christ's life. Mm -hmm. That we 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 thank him for, and we all know is his death, burial, and resurrection. resurrection. Amen. Amen. That is the yes. most important event, as we believers know, yes. pertaining to his life, his death, burial, and resurrection. Right. Why? Because when his death is when he he um took the keys of death. Yes, he, that's he right. went preached the spirits in prison. Yes, he died right. for our sins. He rose again. That's right. And he conquered death. death. And when he ascended, he has all power, power. and he's come back as judge. Yes, that's right. Those are key. All right.
We know Jesus Christ was born, but not on you know December twenty fifth. <laughs> not December 25th, yeah. right? There's there's theories about when he was born around the fall. I honestly believe he was, was born in the fall. Around September. Around the, the Feast of Tabernacles. Yeah, yes. Between September and October. Yeah, I believe he was yeah. born around, you know, mm -hmm. Jews ha the Jews have this feast called the Feast of Tabernacle. Mm -hmm. I believe he was Me born too. around that time because mm -hmm. Tabernacle is a dwelling place and the word Tabernacle is among us. Involved mm -hmm. among us. I, I, I believe he was. I think that was a revelation yeah. the Lord that gave it to me. Mm -hmm. Even though there's no textual proof, I, I believe that. But this December 25th stuff, listen, folks, it is not Jesus Christ's mm -hmm. birthday. All right. Just snap out of it. Yeah. All right. It's not. All right. So you want to worship God in spirit and truth? Just keep his commandments. Yes. You know, uh, uh, align your lives according to what he teach. Mm -hmm. his, his commandments, his doctrine was written in the word. Align your life like that way. All right. Romans 12, be no longer conformed to this world. Bro. Be ye changed and renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. All right. So praise God, you know, I pray that this teaching has blessed you and that, you know, you really see the importance of, you know, prayer and worship. As we said, before you even decide to spend time in that prayer, set the atmosphere by worshiping, praising, mm -hmm. put on some worship music. Yes. Do that, you know, for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you're going to see the difference. Mm -hmm. All right. And then start praying. All right. Build your prayer life. Build your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to see an improvement with your walk. Mm -hmm. Remember, a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. All right? You all be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.